Hello friends, thanks for joining today's data analytics talks. It's all about CDF, Cognite Data Fusion, which is an industrial data whoops platform. I wonder if you have already got a opportunity to explore this tool, learn this tool and even work with this tool. If you have, let me know. Very recently I got introduced to this tool and I'm trying to explore and understand more about this tool. As you read, this is one of the world's first AI-powered industrial data host platform. As a data engineer, we always work with data ingestion, transformation and consumption. This is also kind of an ETL tool, but it is specific to industries. It could be refineries, oil and gas, or manufacturing, and kind of. So let's explore this tool and see if we can get an opportunity to work with that. I will make this session in a structured way. I'll start with the intro then architecture, then integration fundamentals, model fundamentals, contextualization. And finally, I will try to give you to work with CDF. I already mentioned that CDF is an industrial data whoops platform product. You know, many organizations need to integrate and discover their IT, that is information technology, OT, that is operational technology, and ET, engineering technology data, to explore and solve operational issues. With Cognitive Data Fusion, that's CDF, we can stream our data into CDF data model, where data is normalized, enriched by adding connections between data sources of different types and stored in a graph index in the cloud. With our data in the cloud, we can use CDF services and tools to build solutions and applications to meet your business needs. We can interact with our data through CDF portal application or work with APIs or SDKs. CDF currently supports Microsoft Azure and Google Cloud Platform as cloud providers. To summarize, CDF is a tool getting data from source systems to value. We can use CDF platform for contextualization and data operations. Then we will ask what is contextualization? You are seeing that contextualization services. So contextualization is a process that combines machine learning, role engines, and domain knowledge to map resources from different sources to a CDF model. This is what is called a contextualization. Using different techniques, matching the source data to a CDF model is what is called contextualization. Then second is data operations. What is a data operation? It's a set of tools and practices to manage your data life cycle through collaboration and automation. There are many tools like extractors, transformers, data set, quality monitoring, machine learning models, allow data engineers and data scientists, data analysts and other discipline across your organization to work together to establish, automate, continuously optimize your data management and decision making practices. So what is next? We will see the architecture of the CDF. Do you feel some similarities of your ETL process? We have data source, we have extract, we have staging, we have transform, data model, 
then we have applications this is somewhat similar to what we do right so we have the data sources extraction process staging area transformation model then we are consuming the refined data and there is an orchestration and monitoring now as i said is supporting azure and google cloud platforms so let's look one by one the major inputs are information technology that's already mentioned like it is in it which is information technology data then we have the operational technology data and we also will have the ET that is engineering technology data example for IT is ERP systems file servers databases example for industrial operational technology could be industrial control systems with time series data and coming to the ET could be diagrams like P and IDs and 3D models like CAD and all. So coming to extract, there are standard and custom extractors provided by CDF. The extractors links to the source system and push data in its original format to the staging area as part of the data integration workflow. So we have they have the custom extractors as well as standard extractors. So Cooknet provides extractors for both OT and IT source systems. You can also create your own custom extractors. Cooknet has extensive experience in making custom extractors and it's provide SDK to help you get started. So we have the DB extractor, we have the custom extractors and there is also open text OPC UA OEC soft and so on. So that's about the extractors. So we have the data source and extractors. The data is extracted from source using extractors. We have both standard extractors as well as custom extractors. Next is staging area. The staging area data stays as original format. The data flows from the extractors into CDF ingestion API from here on everything lives in the cloud the first stop is the staging area where tabular data is stored in its original format it's also referred as a CDF row or cognite row this is the CDF row or cognite row and the data is stored in cloud we have Azure and we have the Google Cloud Of course, the next is transformation. So data transformation is a process of changing your data set from one state into another and is a core part of data integration workflow. This transformation is a core part of the data integration workflow. CDF ships with a built-in data transformation tool, CDF transformations and provides integration to multiple other data transformation technologies. So this transformation is consuming a lot of other data transformation technologies including AIML, machine learning and so on. The fifth stage is CDF data model. So we have access management, contextualization, data governance, everything sit within data model so contextualized data is a key to making your data more accessible rapidly drawing new insight from your data and making your data do more the interactive contextualization tools in cdf let you combine machine learning then rule engines and domain expertise to map resources from different sources system to the CDF data model. So that's what initially we mentioned about the contextualization. So this is 
where the original data is being mapped to CDF data model using various techniques including machine learning. Then the final stage is build and consume architecture. So already I mentioned like Cognite provides in-field and asset data insight and it can integrate with third-party visualization tools like Grafana, Power BI and you can also build custom application even mobile application and because CDF provides you APIs the SDKs to build your own applications let's move on and see how data being stored in the CDF data model and what is the relevance of this contextualization here we can see that data is stored no more as a structured one it's like it's a labeled property graph it has nodes and relationship the graph consists of nodes and edges for relationship among data entities this contextualization is required when the data coming from the source being contextualized using different algorithms like entity matching document parsing and so on and get the right fit model for that input source that is what is called the contextualization so cognite runs several instances or clusters of cognite data fusion on both azure and google cloud and each cdf cluster is self-contained they all run the same code and receive same update each cluster can have multiple tenants implementation process is just a three-step process first one is setting up the data governance second is integrating data third is building solutions and consuming data and you already mentioned like we have different source systems different extractors and major ones are ot systems it systems and et systems and uh, no coconut supports uh, multiple extractors including Cognite DB extractor, Cognite document extractor, Cognite OPC UA extractor, Cognite PI extractors. And in the architecture diagram, we have seen that there is something called a row format or staging. Why do we need a row format? Why? Because there are many various reasons like easy to reprocess the data. Some of the source systems we are extracting data from are sensitive and mission critical to the customized production operations so it's easy to reproduce the data then easy to make changes to the data then no data loss and these are the major reasons why they maintain a raw format and in summary you know we have the raw information then we have the transformation step and we have the final end cdf data model so this summarizes the 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 primary function of the data transmission is to transform the data from CDF staging into Cognite data model. The first function is reshape. What is a reshape? Reading from one form to another. That's reshaping. Then what is enrich? Enrich data with more information by running a feature generation algorithm. Then contextualize. What's contextualization? Contextualize the data by matching it with other data objects in CDF. Already mentioned that we use multiple algorithms for that, like entity matching and uh, document parsing and all. Then finally, analyze. To analyze the data quality by checking if all the required information is present in the data. So these are the four major functions under data transformation. We must see various data resource types in CDF. In CDF, data is collected and organized based on resource types. That's why it's important. 
most of the resources in CDF is used to store different types of data. So, what are the important uh, resources like asset, time series, sequences, files, events, and 3D models? It's very crucial to have understanding of each resource type. So, we have various resource types like asset, time series, sequence, files, events, and 3D model. Let's see each one of them. First of all, let's start with uh, assets. Assets are digital representation of objects from the physical world. Assets are typically recognized by humans. Example, a particular pump set, a production system. We use assets to connect related data from different sources. And assets are organized into asset hierarchies. Let's look into the next resource type which is 3D model. Most of you know what is a 3D model, right? A 3D model resource type store file that provide a visual and geometrical data and context to assets. For example, we can connect a pump asset with a 3D model of the plant floor where it is located. And seeing asset data rendered in 3D is a great way to discover and find the data you are interested in. By rendering analysis result in 3D, you can better understand data, for example, by highlighting all equipments that has had issue last year. So, 3D model rendering has advantage over 2D model. So, 3D model can be uploaded via CDF user interface to better visualize and contextualize data. So, that is all about 3D model. So, let's move on. So, we have the events. Event resource types store information that happens over a period of time. Event has start time and end time and can be related to multiple assets. So, example is piping and instrumentation diagram, P and IDs. And we have the time series and files. The time series resource type store a series of data points in a time order. That's a time series. And file resource type store document that contain information that is related to one or more assets. That's a file type. And how you organize the data according to the resource type is important. So we have relationship, we have labels, and we have data set to connect resource types. And what is the relationship? A relationship resource type represent connection between resource object in Cognite Data Fusion CDF. Each relationship between a source and a target object is identified by a relationship type and external IDs and resource types of the source and target object. Okay, so we have relationship, we have labels and we have data set which is used to organize the resource types. A asset has 3D model information, asset has events, asset has files, asset has sequences, and asset has time series. I think with this information, you have got a very good idea about the CDF. We started with the intro, then we looked into the architecture, we looked into the process, the steps, and various resource types how the resource types are organized using relationship labels and data sets in the second part we will look into use cases also how we consume and create application and also we will see how we can start using or doing some hands-on with this cdf thank you thank you for watching thank you